Gravity, simply defined, is a force of attraction of one body for another, especially objects to the Earth. One such object, Anthony Spud Webb, the human force, is about to reach beyond extraordinary limits. Spud Web. Spud who? He's hot, he's fast, he's quick. Well, I would say Spud Web's about 6'4". Uh, oh yeah, Spud Web, Atlanta Hawks, 5'4", and dunk. <laughs> But look, he's got all around game. Pretty good defensively, offensively. Got hops, jump. He plays pretty good. Some of your old photographs when you were. Do you remember this, Bob? Oh, that was a youngster then, huh? Yeah, that reminds me of the time when you used to. You remember? This is one you used to put up the clothes hang on the door over there and use the little Nerf ball. Mm -hmm. Tear up the house, huh? Yeah, run all down the hallway. Have Ridge guarded, trying to slam dunk. Remember this one, Spud? You were about four years old trying to make a slam dunk. That's a great one. His senior year, he packed the gyms wherever he went, all in the suburbs and everywhere, and they were talking all over town about the spud web, the dunk. You know, he could dunk the ball. I know this coach said one day they were practicing at the gym, and everybody called him and told him, come up and see spud, he's dunked the ball. And he, I think he was only about 5'4 then. And uh, everybody just all over the city just knew about him, you know, dunking the basketball at 5'4. <laughs> Spud Webb is a unique role model to youth across the country. His desire for competing at the top of his profession continues to demonstrate his determination. Well, I always ask um, my brother Reginald to play with me because I didn't have anyone else to play with. But uh, you know, I used to drag him back there so I can have someone to beat up on, you know. <laughs> but most of the time I would be out uh, imagining that I was some guy in the NBA playing uh, in different situations and uh, when I couldn't find uh, my friends uh, uh, playing by myself, I always asked my brother Reggie to play. Well, it was very helpful. My uh, sister uh, was a teacher at the school that I attended my last two years and I don't think it was any pressure because I always was a student. I think the reason Spud made it in the NBA was because of his determination, his self-motivation, and his uh, he had a desire to really be a successful basketball player. And that, all those things combined, he, it inspired him to become a successful basketball player and he achieved his goal. 
Well, I coached Bud in 19, 1980, 81, 82, and um, he, when he first came on campus, he was very shy. And everybody knew he was a good athlete, but he was very shy. In fact, he wouldn't even look at me many times, even when we were instructing him. And, but I could tell uh, he was always listening and uh, had a lot of pride in everything he did. And I could see real quickly that, I, that he could play in college. Well, he was a cashier at the time he worked in the store, and uh, he was so short, I think, that uh, sometimes he had to get a stool to stand up on and work the cash register. It was amazing to the people to see him to work the cash rate as small as he was. We play dominoes practically every day, and uh, we are very good at it, and uh, domino help you to count. If you be around Dominique every day, um, you can't be shy because he's always uh, in a, just an up spirit. Well, first of all, when first, Bud first came into Atlanta, uh, no one even thought that he would even make our team, and the first day I seen him play, I went to the coach and told him it'd be a big mistake by cutting this guy because he's a guy who's going to help us uh, when the season starts. And unfortunately, he got hurt in training camp, and no one really got a chance to see what he can do. And I kept telling the coach, just you know, hang on to him and you know, just give him a chance. First regular season game we played, he uh, had 22 points and 11 assists, and that was big for a rookie, especially a guy his size and and all the odds was against him to to do as well as he did. I respect him a lot as a person as well as a player because he, he beat all odds. He's a guy who had a, a tremendous heart. Uh, he had more heart than a lot of guys I know because he's, his will to go out there and do well and to compete is greater than a lot of guys I've played with over the years. I set my goal to be in the NBA when I started at the boys club in the seventh grade. And, uh, you know, I made it in the NBA and, and that's, you know, something I can uh, cherish the rest of my life. When you're playing point guard, when I first started playing, I used to go right all the time. Everything was right-handed. And when I first started out, I used to look at the ball when, I'm, when I dribble. And, and every time I look at the ball while I'm dribbling, somebody can take it. If I'm dribbling like this here, Randy can take my ball all day, but if I if I go get up at Randy, if I get up if I go up at Randy, and I'm driven and looking at him, what you think he's thinking about now? But if I'm looking at him, and he's looking at the ball, who you think can beat who? But if I got my head down, who gonna beat? Okay, so when you're dribbling with either hand, if you're dribbling this way, you keep your head up on Randy. See if he reach, if he reach, I teach. I go that way, all right? Either, either hand. If I'm looking at him, he can't, he can't touch it. But if I go down here, if you go down the court, who gonna win that game? Randy. So when you're dribbling with either hand, you keep, uh, keep your head up. I think as an individual he's special because a lot of times so many people has told him you can't do this and you can't do that and I mean as hard as it is when someone tell you you can't do something to keep yourself motivated and when you know you are fighting all kind of odds you know being that short and you know I think he was pretty much if not the shortest player in the NBA at first he was pretty close. <laughs> He 
went to Midland Junior College, we started really seeing how great he was and that he did have a chance at maybe becoming a professional ball player. And when he had a chance to go to NC State, we kind of figured if anybody gave him a chance that he could make it. have to have uh, confidence in yourself first that you can play because no one else will have confidence in you and uh, you have to set goals. My goal was um, to finish school and uh, play in the NBA and uh, I looked at that goal every day and and um, it, it rings on my mind every day and uh, like I, how I got started in basketball was um, one guy uh, didn't have his grades um, to play in the seventh grade, after we sit over there and watched two weeks, this guy that was too small or couldn't play, and this guy didn't have his grades, and um, and we got the opportunity to play, and I scored 20 points uh, the first game. I can remember that like yesterday, and uh, I had a coach, uh, Jimmy Tubbs, and uh, we played the rest of the year. And by the time these guys got their grades together, it was too late, and that's how I really got in, you know, to, to keep playing basketball. You know, every year I went through school, that's what I thought about, even through college, was doing my grades that I wouldn't play, like those guys. And um, you know, that's you know, a story that I always tell to the kids that of you know, staying in school and staying away from drugs because I know it, at my size, I couldn't play in the NBA if I was on drugs. And, and I always tell them to put God first in their life because he's given all of us the talent and it'll blend out pretty soon. Challenger Club. That's 7 feet tall to play basketball. Let's show them what the small man can do in a big man's game, all right? All right. Let's go. Hustle in, hustle in, hustle in. All right. What else somebody want to share with you guys? Hey, Alvin have invited me to come down to his basketball camp and speak on basketball and teach the fundamentals of basketball. And I'm inviting every one of you because I've seen you play on the playground here. And I want you to come in to the camp at the boys club and invite, I'm inviting you to the camp. Yeah! 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 Think you can handle it? Yeah, we can handle it. What do you think? You think you can handle it? I think they can handle it. I think they can handle it. All right! Yeah!
seat. All right, all right. Hurry up, have a seat, have a seat. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Let's try this again. Have a seat, son. Huh? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good to have you out. Good to parents. Good to see so many of you out to support it. I'd like to take this time to introduce someone very special, very special to me. He's very special because we have a history together. We grew, he grew up with me, what, what, fourth or fifth grade? Fifth. fifth grade. The boys club. Taught him everything he knows. Not everything I know, everything he knows. He's um, plays for the Atlanta Hawks. He won the slam dunk competition in 1986. And although he's known as the smallest man in the NBA, he's a giant of a man and a giant of a friend. Put your hands together for Spud Webb. I want to thank Alvin personally for inviting me here because he's been so much to me in my career. Uh, coming back to the Boys Club is something that you always dream about of playing in the NBA and coming back and talking to kids. Because one day one of you guys will be standing up here talking where I am. So, you know, keep basketball in mind, but, you know, as we teach today and we go through the drills, you know, listen and learn, because that's the way I was when I was little in the boys club. And uh, we just want to have fun today as we go through pointers over basketball. So we got to have fun and got to learn the basketball, because if you're not having fun, you might as well not play. So we're going to get out and play today, and I hope everyone have fun, and let's go. These stretching drills decrease the chances for injury. Before you go, we are here to help strengthen and develop your basketball skill. But in order to do that, there's some important drills and exercises that we must do. Stretching is one of the most important things that an athlete needs to do. Okay, the majority of the injuries that takes place for a professional athlete because they haven't stretched properly. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'd like for you to line up into three lines so you can begin some stretching exercises. Outside us, we're going to take our, our right hand and place it down toward the floor, bending our left hand above our head. This stretches our side knee all along me. Feel that stretch there? We're going to do five count of five. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. The side stretch. Stretch the hands over your head, bend sideways from the waist, and lower the right arm down towards the right knee. Conditioning is vital in any sports, and staircase running with supervision can help build those leg muscles. The crossover dribble is a maneuver to change direction and lose a defender. Okay, when you first play basketball, you learn to dribble first. And there are three things you have to learn to dribble with your right hand, your left hand, and a crossover dribble. That's the first introduction to basketball, a dribbling. The first one is right-handed. And the perfect demonstration is just dribbling. OK, 
Yeah, who wants to show me the right-handed dribble? Brick, come on up. Get down low, buddy. Get that feet out of front. Get that feet out of front. Don't, don't go all the way down. There you go. Five, four, three, two, one. Score. Next, we're going to go to the left-handed dribble. Your left hand is exactly like the right handed, only you're playing your right feet in front of you with your back turned the other way. And you got to protect the ball with your right hand. So when you're always looking up again, you never look down at the basketball because they're still at the way. See, I have my right hand out in front of me in this case someone is on me, but you always keep your head up and never look at the basketball because you can't see the floor if you're looking at the basketball. All right, since I've demonstrated the first, the left-handed dribbling drill, I want somebody out of the second group to come up and show me the left-hand dribbling drill. Who's gonna come up and show me? Come on up, John. Keep your head up. Get down low. Five, four, three, two, one, score. We went through the left hand and right hand dribbling drill. The next drill is the crossover dribble. You still have to keep your head up on a crossover dribble because the man is directly in front of you. And I'm gonna demonstrate the dribbling drill of a crossover dribble, then I'll let someone come up and teach me. Okay, now I done demonstrated who out of the third group is gonna come up and show me the crossover dribble. Any hands? Come on, GW. Bend them knees. Bend them knees. There you go. There you go. Five, four, three, two, one. Basket. All right. <laughs> Okay, now that we've covered all the areas, and I've done uh, the crossover, left and right-handed, who's gonna take the ball from me? Any hands? Come on, Tara. You ready? Next is the jump rope. I also use the jump rope to warm up and to work on my body control. Next is the baseball pass. Baseball pass is using one hand, with the ball behind your head, taking one foot forward and throwing it as far as you can. One more time. The two hand chest pass, but with a bounce, all right? So we're gonna put our foot out front, we're gonna do it halfway bounce, all right? Just like the two-hand chest pass, all right? Let's go. Watch us first. Put it out front.
first, the first drill we're gonna go through is the layup drill. Now, Carl, you gonna help me with the layup drill? First of all, I'm gonna show you the basic way to do it with a right hand layup because I'm right handed. It's easy for me. So I'm gonna take the basketball. When I, when I go to the, the layup. A shot taken using the backboard in close to the basket is the most basic shot in basketball. It's the first one you should master. All right. This I'm doing a slow motion, and then I'm doing it in a fast motion. All right. This is a slow motion. Now foot. Okay, the next drill we're going to do is the mic and drill. And the mic and drill is using both sides of the basket where you warm up or run in the back drill. I'm going to demonstrate it and then I'm going to let someone out of the group come up and demonstrate it. Alright? Alright, that's the mic and drill. You also notice doing this drill, you don't let the basketball hit the floor. Alright, I'm gonna let TV come up and demonstrate the mic and drill for us. The jump shot. As the name suggests, a jump shot, or jumper as it's often called, is a shot released after you jump, ideally at the peak of your jump, making it difficult to block. Square your shoulders to the basket. Use a one-step motion. Go up straight. Don't drift when you go up for a jumper. Don't forget the follow-through. Next drill we're going to go through is a jump shot. I know all you guys think y'all are good shooters and like to shoot all the time. And everybody had a different shot, so I'm going to show you one of the fundamentals of shooting. First of all, when you grab a basketball, when you get ready to shoot, you can't have the ball straight up. Because if you, your, your legs are straight, you can't do nothing but pass. And nobody out here want to pass. Everybody want to shoot. <laughs> so when you catch it, you're just like this in a triple threat position. So if you had a ball like that, you can easily go up and shoot. But first of all, when you have a ball, you have to have your hand behind the basketball when you get ready to shoot. And you go straight up, shoulder straight at the basket. Because if you go like this here, you can't shoot like that trying to fall away, all right? So this is the perfect way you go straight up, straight back down, and release. Just like this. All right? Keep your hand behind the basketball every time. Because it's a straight shot. Either I haven't made it yet. <laughs> What did I say first? You have to bend your knees, have your hand behind the basket, basketball, looking at the back of the rim. And you, you got to have your elbow bent. And it's a good follow through, just, just like this here. Just like leaving your wrist up. Straight up, follow through. Catch it. When you first catch it, what you gonna do? All right, you got the knee behind the You're looking at the basket. All right, shot. Good shot. One more. You can warm up in the 
layup, which is taking off with the right foot and extending your arm. And the jump shot is, is basically you have to shoot the same way because your elbow is bent like an L and you follow through and you get leverage off the feet just like that. And uh, you shoot the way the same way every time and it'll go in every time. The next drill we're going to do is, is a pivot move. If you have your man one-on-one -on -one to the basket, you're going to have to use your pivot foot to beat him or to throw him off to go to the basket. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use John for this one. All right. John is, what John doing is he stay, he's standing in front of me and I'm trying to get to the basket. If he's down in the defensive stand, I'm trying to use this foot to throw John off. That's my pivot foot. All right, this foot can't move. So you have to have that foot still and use this as a pivot move. So if I fake John this way, he's gonna go. And I beat him this way, all right? Now I'm gonna let John try to demonstrate that for me. Okay, the next drill is gonna be defense. Nobody like playing defense. So I'll play defense this time. Who's gonna come up and demonstrate the defense for you? If I'm on defense, this is what I wanna do. I wanna keep the man in front of me. So if he's the right, if he's got the ball in his right hand, I wanna put my left foot back. And if he got the ball like that, that if he go this way, I'm gonna drop step with my right foot. Go that way. Just like this, then he can't beat me to the basket. Then if, he, if he's in front of me and he go this way, all I do is go like that there. And go that way again. Come on back. Come on back. I'm too fast for me. All right, if I'm up like this, I got this foot. Watch this foot here. Go this way. This is drop step. He don't beat me to the basket. But if I just stand there, just stay, go again. If I just, he don't beat me to the basket. All right? Now you play defense. Show me what I did. What foot you gonna put? All right. If I go this way, which foot you gonna drop? All right, now if I go this way, it's gonna stay that way, right? Okay, you ready? Go. All right, you got it, All right, all right, you got it. That's deep. Right. Receiving a pass. Give your teammate a good target. I'm going at the basket, I want to catch it with two hands so I can just lay it up. Just like this. Alright? You throw the ball and I'm going with one hand. I even lose, right? So what we want to do is catch it with two hands so we can just go to the basket. You can't take that away, alright? Now Mr. Rick is going to show me what I just did. Catching, he's catching the ball and going to the basket, and I'm defending. See, if he catches it with one hand, I'm gonna knock it out. So she better give a good pass, all right? Oh. One more time. One more time. One more time. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so the proper way to, to catch a basketball with two hands. I don't care where you are on the floor, you catch it with one hand, people can knock it out. And if you catch it with two hands, you can't nobody knock it out. Alright, so we're gonna use two hands, alright? Footwork, 
A fundamental requirement for good basketball of all the basic skills, your ability to move quickly and with maximum control and minimum wasted motion will depend on quick stops. Take a few deep breaths before shooting. Get comfortable. Use your legs. They make it much easier to get the ball to the hoop with a smooth flowing shooting motion. Practice free throws when you're tired. It's not much use being completely well rested when practicing free throws because you will almost never be shooting them under such conditions in a game. Okay, the first thing you do when you're coming up to the free throw line, you measure off how far you have to shoot by looking at the back of the rim. And then you come up, you put two feet at the front, at the free throw line, and your body's square. Because it's it even off directly with the square, with your shoulders. And you bounce the ball two times, and your concentration level is at the back of the rim. You bend two legs, all the way back, motion, using your legs. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question about free throw shoot. Why is it important to make your free throws? They won. Because sometimes one or two points can start a game, and if they fail a bad free throw shooter intensity, then he might lose the game for them. That's true. That's why you should always practice. That's why I always practice my free throws. Because when I was a rookie, my first year in the NBA was in the playoffs against Detroit. And the score was tied, I was at the free throw line, 30,000 people watching, your mother at home watching you. If you miss, you're no good anymore. So when I got to the free throw line, I was concentrating on making it, and I just shot the shot and I made the first one. Took a deep breath, because I knew I could make them because I've been practicing. That's why I wasn't nervous. And so I shot the second one, and it went in, and we won the game. So we won by two points. So that's why I say always practice your free throws. All right? <laughs> Let's 
take it to the hoop. Been in the uh, in winning uh, the slam dunk contest in the NBA, you have watched it, you know, on TV. You've seen Dr. J and, and Dominique and Michael Jordan and all the guys do it. And being in it, you know, I wasn't nervous um, going out because um, you know I knew uh, that I could compete. It just the day I went out and people noticed that I was in it, but well, they said maybe this guy could dunk at his size, but you know, maybe one, two dunks. But uh, when you enter something, I know when I enter something, the competitiveness comes out of me, and, and my objective is to go out and win. See, my man, when I throw it into Randy, he's going he's gonna to trap back on Randy. He's going to go back. So that means I can spot up here or here. Randy going to know he's not. All right? So that's where I have to take the jump shot. Go back. So he can't get back. He can't get back to that, all right? Do everybody know what the triple threat is? No. Triple threat is when you catch the basketball, you can dribble, shoot, or pass. That's three, triple threat. Now what did I say? Pass. All right, so when Randy throw me the ball, so if I catch it now, if I catch it, what can I do now? What else can I do? What else? All right. So when Randy passed to me, I got to be in position to do all those things. All right, ready? Pass. <laughs> That's a Dallas Maverick. <laughs> See, either one, either one I can do it from that one position, all right? All right, ready? Go by. I can dribble on either one of them, all right? So if you catch the ball, if you throw it to me now, I catch it. What can I do? Get back. That's it, ain't it? So if that means if all I can do is pass, that means Randy gonna be all over me. Come on, Randy, get all over. Me. Get all. See? What can I do now? Big old guy, I can't even see the goal. Now, one of, throw it to me and run at me too, Randy. See if I catch it in a triple threat, what can I do now? I can shoot it, dribble, everything. Y'all want me to take it? <laughs> it's 6.30. All right, let me ask y'all ask questions so we can go. What was that drill now? All right, don't forget it. I, I think he's special. Uh, he's a 5'6", and he got great jump ability and great speed. And it gives uh, other younger little players hope and desire that someday that they can become a professional athlete or to make something of themselves. And, it, you know, guys in the league don't look as don't look as Spud as a joke, you know, no more. You know, they look as Spud as another ball player. I mean, when he first got in the league, you heard people say, oh, the one thing he can only do is jump and dunk. You know, if he don't get to the basket, he ain't going to score. And, you know, he worked on his jumper and he worked on his game where he got an all-around game now. And when you talk to other ball players, you talk about Spud, they, they talk about him as a ball player and not as you know, being somebody that's out there that just can do one thing. 
You know, having Spud as a big brother in the NBA, it's not like most other guys probably that have big brothers in the NBA. You say like five or six inches taller than they are. I've always been about three or four inches taller than Spud is. And that always uh, posed a problem when we were playing basketball because a lot of times I would come close to beating him. Or even sometimes I might beat him. And if I beat him, that's like five extra games. I'm like much older than Spud. And he always wanted to play with the older guys. Football, or basketball, whatever we play, he always wanted to play. With dedication, a desire to be the best you can be, and good hard practice, you too can be a Spud Webb. To reach the top, you've got to want it.